So I thought I'd make a video today on um, OMSI and how to basically just tr general tips and tricks um, when you drive in both automatics and manuals. So to start off, we're going to go through automatics. So uh, I've got some footage just playing in the background that I recorded earlier on Einstein in um, Mercedes-Benz 407 Duster Bus. I use for both ones. Uh, you can see the automatic version at the minute. So, first point, um, kick down. It's something I see used all too often in videos. Kick down is alright when used in the right circumstances. For instance, if you were parked up at a bus stop and there was a car coming round the outside of you, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't too close, but he wasn't, you know, too far away. So you can get out in that gap. But just, that's when a kick down is going to be appropriate. Okay, and only use it for a short amount of time. Just get it, just to get you up to speed up. 30 kilometers an hour, say, and then just ease off the throttle and go back to what would be normal. If, you know, there's a car miles behind and you can barely see him in your mirrors, that's, that's not really a sort of appropriate situation to use kick down. Because the thing with kick down is, if you're trying to like improve your driver rate or something, I don't know, it's one way to annoy the hell out of your passengers because the fact that you're going from standing to flipping out what I don't know full speed in just a couple of seconds well no not full speed but like I don't know 30 k's in a couple of seconds and 30 k's of 30 k's in doesn't seem that fast but you think about it the acceleration <coughs> that you're getting from kick down is you know thirty k's quickly develops into something more like sixty k's or seventy k's, and uh, as you'll see later on in the video, um, that can cause problems when cornering and stopping. Um, yeah, because you know you come around a blind corner. Let's, let's say blind corner. I think I've got a bit of footage to represent this actually. And there's a set of traffic lights actually, and you know the light engine obviously is pretty crap, if I'm honest. So the sound engine and the physics and like basically everything else about OMC apart from the fact that it's a good simulator and there's a good modding community for it but say you're coming around this corner and you can't see the lights from where you are because we've been render distances I don't know and you make an attempt to stop well what's going to happen is if you're doing say 30 k's when you see the lights are red it's going to be a fairly easy stop say if you're like 100 metres away that's yeah that's reasonable, you can stop in that. If you're 100 metres away and you're doing 65 k's and the lights turn red, you are going to have to slam the brakes on as hard as you flipping well can and you're still probably going to overshoot because you're driving a bus that weighs, what, 15 to 20 metric tonnes-ish when it's fully loaded? And OMSI does weight simulation pretty well, so you're guaranteed an overshoot in other words. Um, so yeah, kick down is bad. Keep speed under the limit. Say if the limit's what thirty k's, go twenty five. If the limit's sixty, I don't know, go fifty. You really don't want to be hitting or going over the limit. I mean, I know there's no fines like there is in American trucks and a Euro truck, but it is going to cause you a lot, uh, a lot of hassle when something like you know you're going down a uh, dual carriageway and the AI. In obviously is, in all fairness, like, I don't know, bad, let's just say that. Um, the AI is, is, they will just pull out in front of you. I, I don't care. I've got a clip of this actually. I was on a roundabout and um, AI goes past another AI car. It's fine. The moment I turn up on this roundabout, Fitman just pulls out in front of me, smashes into the side of the bus. Woohoo, recording ruined, start again. So, um, try and go below the limit, because the, you know, the, the more controlled your speed is, the more control you've got over the bus. Um, something to note with Automax, though, is when you, you're, say, cruising, you have no control whatsoever over what gear is selected. If you're doing 60, 50 k's, I don't know, and you're in second gear, in a manual you might be in third or fourth gear, probably fourth, maybe pushing fifth. 
what's going to happen is you are going to be I mean, you're going to be heating the engine up quite a lot. You're going to be using a lot of fuel, and you can know that because it's going to be screaming at you. And the only way you're going to be able to get it into the next gear is by accelerating and then slowing down again. And by slowing down, you're just going to push it back down into the other gear. So, if you are going to cruise, make sure it's at a level where you're not stressing the engine out too much, you're not heating it up, you're not using too much fuel. I know fuel economy and stuff isn't that much of a problem in OMC, but, to be honest, you, it is something you want to be wary of. So, when you're going up a hill in a manual, what do you do? Well, in a manual you have, I think it is five or six buttons you have not in order drive neutral reverse one two and sometimes three it depends though some menu uh, some automatics don't even have a button for reverse or well, no not reverse neutral rather you just unselect drive and that is neutral uh, I think a good example of that is the SD77 the original um MAN deck is one of the originals that you get. But basically, when you're going up a hill, you want to be able to select gear that you know the bus won't fall out of. So if you just select two, you get the bus into second gear and you select two, the bus won't be able to go above second gear and it won't be able to fall out of second gear, I think. Basically what this means is the bus has to go at a certain you know you have to keep the bus going at a certain speed. Now what if you're using first gear, you know, that's for crawling. If you're stuck in heavy traffic, so unless you've got, like, a 50,000 pound, I don't know, 5,000 pound PC, and you have, like, a thousand cars on the road at all times in OMC, you're not going to get stuck in traffic, but first gear be certain like crawling. Right, so when you stop him, what do you do when you stop? Well, you've got two options. Instead of just holding down the brake, what you're going to do is you leave the bus and drive, put the handbrake on. Now in some buses this creates a very noisy rattling effect that really gets on my nerves and I hate. Which is why um, most of the time I do this. What I will do is when I stop the bus I put it in neutral. If I'm on a hill, yeah, I'll, I'll put fine, I'll put the handbrake on or just hold the brakes on. But I just put the bus in neutral. Simply because it's not going to roll anywhere like that. If you leave the bus and drive, and you let go of that brake pedal, and take the handbrake off, the bus instantly starts rolling forward, if you're on a flat surface. Now in some cases, there's a car right in front of you, maybe you've stopped a bit too late at some traffic lights, and you've got no room to reverse. Taking your foot off that brake is not going to be nice, to be honest. It's going to cause you quite a lot of problems, I'm not going to lie. But, um, because then you're going to get stopped, you, you know, everyone's going to want to get off your bus, you're going to have to call the police, la da 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 the list goes on. So that's something to turn off. Um, cruising is something that isn't easily done in an automatic, to be honest, in my opinion. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you have no control over what gear selected. So, if you're going to be cruising, use minimal amounts of throttle. As simple as that, just use as little throttle as you can. Just if you just touch the throttle, just nudge the throttle if you like. Every now and then, just tap it and then let lift off again. And uh, the same is going to go for manuals. But when you first put the bus into drive and you roll on out from a stop, let the bus roll for a bit before going. Unless you're going in for a kick down, let the bus roll for a bit and then gently start accelerating. Don't just go straight up all the way. I mean, for those of you using a keyboard, it, you're not going to be able to do that because, you know, you just press 8 on the numpad and the bus is off, you know. That's it. You're off at God knows what speed. That's your only throttle mode. You can't control that. So what you want to do is you just want to, you know, be very wary of how much throttle you put on. So, moving on to manuals. Once again, I'll say again, kick down is bad, unless you're in a b sticky situation. And with a manual, the only way you're going to be able to do kick down is by short shifting. Now, if you don't know what short shifting is, in OMC terms, basically it's where you ignore the 
uh, what's going on in the rev limiter and you accelerate to a certain speed and you just shift straight up into the next gear uh, and just keep going. Most manuals have a clutch so the process isn't as fast as kick, uh, kick down isn't as fast as an automatic. I would probably say an automatic would be a manual off the line um, certainly because you know there's no clutch to engage or anything like that but short shifting can be done in semi-auto buses uh, I uploaded a video quite a long time ago now I think it was about a year on Noondorf and I think I did the 302 in etc and the problem that I got well, no, not the problem. The thing about the Setra is it's semi-auto. You don't need. You can use clutch, but you don't have to. There is a clutch on the bus, but you don't have to use it. It's even if it is a manual or automatic, whatever. So basically, you can to get going. I mean, without cl I use clutch on first gear, and then I just do the rest without clutch. Because you just clutch into first gear, you start rolling, you move on, and then you can just slide the bus into second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, whatever. Um, reverse. I use clutch for again simply because if you just put the bus into reverse what's going to happen is it's going to jolt backwards a bit and then it's going to stall and then you're going to have to restart the engine and it's just going to keep happening over and over and over again that's something to be wary of when you're driving an automatic uh, manual rather make sure to slowly release the clutch when you're moving off and use very small amounts of throttle because otherwise the bus is going to jolt violently and you're going to know about it because you'll put it in first, and you'll sl slam the throttle on, you'll let go, and the bus will lurch off, and then go, you know, go flying off, and then you won't be able to find in second, and, you know, oh, job done. You go, wow, you got to a whole, you know, total speed of 12 kilometres an hour. Oh my lord. Speedy. But yeah, something to be wary of. When you're moving off, small amounts of throttle, and gradually release the clutch. Don't just let go of the clutch and then small and that's a throttle. Gradually release the release the so as you're releasing the clutch, sort of replace it with throttle, sort of thing. And I'll go back to hill climbing and cruising now. You have control over what gear you're using, which is a good thing. Um because if you're cruising and you're in third gear and you're cruising at forty Ks, you can go up into fourth and cruising is a lot easier because to maintain forty Ks you're going to have to put down more pressure on the throttle. Which in other words means you know, it's not like hair movements on the throttle, it's more of a push all the way down sort of thing. Which in th theory is quite easy but in practice it, it is a bit harder than it actually seems because in certain situations, say the one I've just mentioned, you know, third and fourth that sort of thing is easily achievable, like really easily achievable. But if you're doing something more like second and third, because you're at such a low speed and the ranges on those gears is lower, then you're gonna have to be using still be using the, the hair movements on the throttle. But moving on Uh what else have I not covered yet? Yes, take the bus out of gear before you stop, please. Like, <laughs> I know it's I shouldn't be like getting, uh, you know, having a hissy fit about it, but seriously, it's a manual. It, you know, you're not driving a car that weighs a ton and an I diesels. You can stop in gear, and they will just roll. But a bus, if you leave that in gear and you stop, it's going to stop. It, it just will. And you'll know you've stalled because you're going to get all these lovely little warning lights pop up on the dashboard. The bus will grind to a halt. And that's, the last, that, that, that's basically the last you know of it. So, something to know you don't need to use the clutch to put, uh, take the bus out of gear. In most buses, unlike the one I mentioned, you will need the clutch to put the bus in gear, but you don't need it to take it out as such. Sim and that's um, pretty simple actually, because if you're stopping, it removes the need to right foot brake. And I personally hate right foot braking. I have to left foot bra left foot brake. 
It's just one of them things that I've got used to now, because the clutch and the brake are very similarly weighted on my G27. They're the same size, so I prefer to accelerate with right foot and clutch and brake with my other foot. Um, however, you can change that in the options, so in certain situations, I think that's just the settings that I've got, because there are two setups for 6 speed gearboxes on C with the controller. The first one is that as long as the, as the gamepad has that button selected continuously, the bus will stay in that gear. The other one is you can select the gamepad and remove it. So if I add my G27, I'll put, put the gear stick into third. With well, the first option, it'd have to stay there for the bus to stay in third. If I took it out, it'd go into neutral. But if I had the other setting set up, if the bus was in third, and I took it out the third on the controller in the game it would stay in third and that's that's um, in some respects that's easier because some buses won't work for instance there's a TAM that I've got installed and I used to be able to use it with my keyboard and I got my G27 Hello. and I couldn't anymore and I have no idea why but it doesn't work unless I have that second gear stick mode selected. Oh ho ho! So that that covers everything that I wanted to cover in this video. Um, you know, just like if you enjoyed, you know, comment if you want me to make more of this or this sort of video. You know, I haven't done an obviously video in flipping yonks, so uh, yeah. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Tara.